Hey, Coda Tricksters! By the way, why didn't I think of it earlier? There are Trekkies, Swifties, Bronies... I should just call you Coda Tricksters from now on. Anyway, today is more like an updates episode. I wanna talk a little bit about my April 1st video, and actually not all of those were lies. And after that, I just wanna talk about what's going to happen next. So please bear with me till the end, this is gonna be a short one. Let's go. Okay, so about the April Fool's episode. I hope by now everyone understood that this was a prank, all the tips were fake, and the demos that went along with them was a mix of some editing and Chrome DevTools magic. And it's true that I didn't make that stuff up. It was all indeed a result of asking the AI. So yeah, in a way you witnessed the script written by AI. And the grim truth there is that you have to get used to it because soon you'll have more of that on YouTube. Low effort YouTube creators just using language models to generate their YouTube video scripts and feeding you all sorts sorts of rubbish and still bloody getting monetized for it. So there is yet another lesson in all of this. The skill that you have to acquire today is not how to use AI. That's the skill you had to acquire yesterday. But it is the skill to tell apart the AI generated BS from honest knowledge. And actually that was my plan all along. While I included some hints that this was an April 1st video, I really tried not to give myself out too soon, trying to keep the straight face all the time. I wanted you to feel weird and uncanny about all those tips in the beginning. I expected you to be like, what? Merge cells in database tables, why? A file menu, since when? But at the same time I also wanted to make it sound realistic. Like, could have there been a hotkey to change tables type? Sure, it could have. Could have Coda introduced the fourth parameter to sequence formula? Yeah, they could. Could have they implemented more doc customization options? Yes, they could, and they should. Take note, Coda. And it worked, many of you fell for it and started writing comments as soon as you saw this tip or that tip not working. But hopefully you were patient enough to watch till the middle of the video, and if you watched till the end, then you're an amazing person, thank you. And yeah, I got a lot of positive feedback on this video, including from Codas, they really liked that it was pretty witty. And sure, better than some of my previous April Fool's pranks. Like in 2020 I published an article with all valid tricks, like singleton tables and using subtables, but I called it how to pay Coda less, because all of the those tricks resulted in fewer object count. And they sure didn't like that one, that was my first post in the community that got removed by Coda. Remind me to tell you the whole story in my next livestream. And yeah, of course there were a few people who felt bad about my video and who wasted a little bit too much time rechecking the tips before they had a chance to watch till the reveal part. To such people I would say, be happy because the lesson will stick with you harder. You might think this is an apology video? Well, I'm sorry, not sorry. I think this was a good one and rather harmless. And also also I managed to teach you a lesson on your own skin, because as I said, that was my plan all along. Would I have done anything differently? Yeah, maybe in the beginning of the video I should have said something like, if you don't see these features, watch until the end of the video to know how to enable them. But do I regret the prank in general? No, I don't. And you know what? I'll do it the next year, and the year after that. Let me have this day to myself, 364 days in a year, I'm telling you truth and nothing but the truth. But that one day in a year let me mock you, fool you, trick you, clickbait you, and have a little bit of fun. Especially if it's good fun and I get to teach you something in the process. Because yeah, my other idea for an April Fool's video was to riz you up with some skibbity gyat Phantom Tux Sigma content. Oh, no. So thank god I chose to do that instead. Alright, the April Fool's video had a massive plot twist. But I wouldn't be Paul if there wasn't yet another plot twist. You see, many of those things are actually doable in Coda. Not natively of course, and they require a little bit of effort to set them up, but they are. So to redeem myself, I will now show you how to do most of those things, and I'll do it in the trickception way that it deserves by reacting to my own video. Use keyboard shortcuts to speed up your workflow. For example, press Ctrl Shift K or Command Shift K if you're Okay, about that one. This might seem useful, but it's only on the first side. That's because in Coda you are not expected to switch between types of views. It's not like in the other apps. In Coda you are expected to create separate views and set them up, and after that you should never really have a need to switch it. So if we really had that shortcut, that would only promote bad habits. You can also use Ctrl Shift M. Okay, this is where I hoped you would suspect something, because how the hell would you even merge cells in a database? Coda is not Word or Sheets where you only use tables as a visual device, and you merge cells to make some sort of a unified header to prevent data duplication. It doesn't work like that in databases. Unfortunately, I don't have illustrations for you at the moment, I will prepare them for the databases episode that comes out in a week, but it's like each row is a separate profile card, and each card has these fields on them, the movie title, 
build a director and you're released and you have to fill them out on each card. This just doesn't make sense. So what the room is the title for three movies and three directors now. This will just not work. And if you really wanted to use the same value in multiple rows, like there's three tasks under one project, you actually need to go and duplicate that project on each of those tasks individually. And then of course you can group it for the view that you were looking for. And Ctrl Shift S to save your changes. Oh, that one is also good. See, I even edited that here. In case you didn't know, you don't press Ctrl S or whatever to save your changes. Like most cloud editors, whenever you make any changes, Coda saves them automatically for you. And you can also create your custom shortcuts by going to the settings and selecting keyboard shortcuts. Okay, this menu item is fake, of course, but there is actually something very close. You see, there is this hacker level thing that Coda doesn't approve of, but if you promise to assume all responsibility over your docs, even if they break, and not contact Coda support to fix those docs for you, then I'll tell you. Most of the things you can do in Coda with your mouse and keyboard can be accessed through the JavaScript console. So by figuring out which methods you need to use and how to use them, you can create yourself little scriptlets that you can reuse to automate some things in your doc. Like a while ago, this person in the community wanted to sort their pages alphabetically. And I created a little scriptlet for them that they could just paste into their console and execute. In fact, this trick was the basis of my custom actions pack that allowed for creating actual Coda actions for each of those scriptlets. But if you've watched my latest live stream, you would know that Coda banned it. So again, what I'm telling you here is not really endorsed. And I too have to warn you with big red letters. That said, again, if you know what you're doing and you absolutely cannot live without it, this is something that you can explore. And then when you have these pieces of code, you can create a bookmark out of them and trigger like that. Or if you need to create a custom hotkey for it, I believe you can find an extension for your browser that can do it for you. Oh, a few more things about the merge cells until I forget. First, soon we are getting the grids feature, aka simple tables. Those are going to be tables which are going to be purely layout device, so not databases. And maybe not immediately at the release date, but hopefully at some point we get merge cells with them. Until then, you can either simulate your merge cells look like this, and if it doesn't work for you, you can always resort to rendering custom HTML and CSS. Which gently gets us to our next tip. But you can also create more complex visualizations like scatter plots and heat maps. Okay, these two are of course Photoshop. These are just a few images I found on Google Images. That said, you can totally achieve this look in a multiple ways. First, speaking about the heat maps alone, in Coda you have the rectangle function, and you can use it to draw a lot of little rectangles of different colors. For example, that's how I've made my snake game. So you can totally use that to draw your heat map. But those are like the most primitive. You can go a step further and actually have vector graphics in your doc, which you can create with all sorts of shapes and lines. And you can have this two ways. You can either have a vector image returned to you from a pack, so basically generated with JavaScript, and perhaps use one of the charting libraries that supports SVG output. But furthermore, you can even do it without a pack and generate it yourself out of pieces right in your Coda doc, like I once did with this tree chart and polar chart, and also some fellow experts did the same for their kinds of charts as well. You can also create custom visualizations using HTML and CSS. To do this, create a canvas. Okay, there is no canvas. This here is just a detail layout. I just deleted the navigation bar in Chrome DevTools. And this is also a fake one. See, when you drag it, it becomes a code block. DevTools magic. That said, this is also possible. Just now we talked about SVG images, but in fact, they can also have HTML blocks in them. And this way you can use HTML to create your graphics and make use of HTML layout engine. That's more advanced than using SVG directly. And I'm using this trick a lot, for example, to generate invoice at my frozen food shop, or my partner once created this org chart for a client, or me, I just recently created this tournament table for a client that shows how many times each person met each other person at a conference, and it is an HTML table wrapped in an SVG wrapped in a Coda image. I'll probably make a dedicated episode about this trick alone, but if you're a patron, you will already have access to this Coda pen doc where you can play around with this capability. The only gotcha here is that both SVGs and HTML rendered this way will not be interactive. That's because in Coda we render them as images, and when it is an image, browsers prevent all interactivity on them for security reasons. So if you're trying to render anything interactive, you either have to let your users know that they have to open this image in a new tab, and this way all the scripts will work, or this image has to be hosted elsewhere as an HTML page, and then served into your doc as an embed. 
If you want to create a list of dates for the next seven days, you can use this formula sequence from today to today plus six, comma one, comma day. And that's what code AI thinks. No, there is no fourth parameter to the sequence formula. You see how it briefly shows you an error here. However, you can totally use the sequence formula to generate you a list of dates. Let's step back a little. First of all, this one here is unnecessary because it's the default value. If you don't specify the step, the step is gonna be one. Here, what you see actually is a list of dates. It's just that you see them in their numeric representation. April 1st was the day 45382, then April 2nd was the day 45383 and so on. This is the number of days since the 30th of December 1899. And the reason for that is Microsoft Excel. This is how historically Excel used to save dates, as the number of days since that exact date. And then hours of the day would be the fractional part of the number. I won't tell you the whole story, you can read it, I will leave you a link in the description. What you need to know is that Excel kinda does this to this day, and Sheets does this, and many other analysis tools do this to keep compatibility with Excel. And while code already stores dates and times in several formats at once, it still converts dates to numbers where numbers are expected, like in our sequence formula. So all you have to do here is take each number of the sequence and convert it to date. And if you need them formatted like in our demo here, unfortunately you cannot use this setting because it doesn't work with list of dates. But you can use a hidden formula to format date time and find the date format that you need and if you don't need the time part just set it to zero. See how we are not doing any sort of concatenation magic and we don't just create text values. What we have here are actually date values. You can take whichever element of the list and then get its year, its month, its day and so on. And if you want to render them all as a bullet list, just add bullet list in the end. All of this date time thing is much more complicated than meets the eye, especially when time zones get involved. That will also call for a whole dedicated episode. You can improve performance by using the recalculate option. To do this, go to file. Well, if you haven't noticed anything wrong with this one, <laughs> of course there is no file menu. But yeah, it's a pity that we don't have this feature. Coda always recalculates formulas when it sees fit. You cannot undo that, that's just how it is. However, you don't have to make everything formulas. When you have those bottlenecks scenarios where a formula just takes too long to recalculate and you don't need it to recalculate every time, you can always implement that as a button. Instead of a formula for the whole column, make the column editable and then in your button right the code that will either recalculate the whole column if that's easier or you can optimize it further and make it recalculate only the values that have allegedly changed and that is gonna be your recalculate button. I already have a whole dedicated episode on this technique in my queue. And yeah, I know it's more manual work, but the point is it can be done and this way you get the most flexibility you can. Besides, there are formulas that don't get recalculated in your doc. Those are formulas for automations, they get recalculated on Coda servers whenever the automation runs, and formulas within parameters to sync tables like I've shown you in my formula tables demo. These also only recalculate when the sync happens. So those are two more ways for you how to make formulas that don't recalculate every time. Now tip number 5 and it's a dog customization tip. Do you know that you can customize the look and feel of your Coda dogs by using themes and custom CSS? You that's where I got you, right? I knew it would get you. Because everyone wants this more doc customization. We already have publishing, we have presentation mode, we have custom domains for lord's sake. And we have custom icons, it's only logical that the next step is that we need more custom branding, such as custom fonts and colors. And while yeah, to some extent you can fake custom fonts by pre-rendering your text as images, and to some extent you can have custom colors in your text, that's just not it, that's not the full branding. So I really hope that this fact that this this trick got you, speaks volumes about how this feature is needed and Coda listens to it and implements this sooner rather than later. In the meantime, I want to let you know that this is in fact possible. Not out of the box of course, but with a third party service called Cloakist. Now this is not an ad and Cloakist is not affiliated, although I'll leave you a referral link in the description just in case, but I remembered about it and I figured I'll tell you about it, because you have a craving and I know a solution. So Cloakist is not really made exclusively for Coda, it was actually designed more for Notion and Airtable and Calendly and so on. And the original idea of the service was to let you host your docs or workbooks on a custom domain 
made, something that Coda couldn't do back in the day. But now Coda supports publishing to custom domains out of the box, so there is fewer reasons to use Cloakist for Coda. However, there is one useful feature that Cloakist still has that Coda doesn't. And you've got it, it's the capability to overwrite Coda's CSS. For example, here I go and I replace all the custom fonts in my published doc to Comic Sans, just like I did in my April Fool's demo. And it works! It took Cloakist a day or two to actually start showing my doc, but in the end, this worked. And other people are using this to hide the search bar or other elements of the Coda UI. That said, if you're getting very excited about this already, here's what you need to know. Take a look at all of these CSS selectors. Normally, they should look like this. This means they are written by a human. And Coda's selectors look like this, meaning that most likely they are minified and will be randomly regenerated each time there is an update in Coda. So all the custom CSS code that you write relying on these selectors will not last for long. Whenever code is own code updates, this may just stop working. That said, if you'd like to give it a try, there is a link in the description, you can use it to sign up to Cloakist, and I may earn a little commission from you, which I'll probably not even be able to withdraw. Okay, what I thought would be a short updates episode wasn't short at all. It was like a proper episode with lots of coded tricks. I should just stop doing that in the beginning of my videos, speaking self-affirmations that is gonna be a short one. But hopefully you're still watching. So I have two updates to spill. The first one, and you've probably noticed it already, is that I'm going to bring my programming down to one episode per week. When I started out and did my relaunch, I thought that two episodes a week would be a breeze. There were days in the past, like the last day of the hackathon, where I managed to push out not one, but four videos in one day. What I failed to think about was that they were nowhere nearly as edited. And with these videos that I now put out on my channel, it easily takes several days to set it up, think through the script, and then film it, and then edit it. So in these last few months, I've been living the routine of finishing one video and then immediately having to start the next one, which left me absolutely no time to work on my packs, or do thumbnails for these videos, or even reply you all, let alone have some rest. And all of this is a sure way to get burned out from all of this and let 2020 21 happen all over again. And I do not want that. I actually want to keep sharing my knowledge consistently even if it means going at a slower pace. And somebody suggested splitting down episodes, but sometimes I just don't feel it would be right. Whenever I start a topic, I actually want to finish it, not artificially break it down into shorter episodes. That said, whenever I feel like I have some shorter tips to share, I'll probably sneak those really short episodes in. As well as when I build something cool and I want to show off as soon as possible, I'll also make the second episode that week. But until I get more confident with my time, and perhaps until I meet at least my first Patreon goal and I can consider outsourcing editing to someone else, please expect one normal video from me each week. I don't know yet what day it will be, perhaps this is gonna be Thursdays. And the second piece of news is that I'm finally distributing docs. <laughs> tell you this, Patreon expert is just abysmal. It's virtually impossible to figure out who was eligible to what, who became a patron and changed their tier when. So since there's not so many of you yet, I'm just figuring all of this manually for now. Hopefully this week I find a more automated way to track this. There are quite a few of interesting architectural tricks that I'm already using in my distribution doc. That is not all from me today. Like, subscribe, Patreon. And now that is all. See you in the next one. Cheers.